How did Bethesda era Fallout games run on an Intel Arc A770? On Linux? Let's take a look. Keep in mind that these games are frame locked at 60 frames per second, so I won't be looking to get the most frames out of these games. Instead, I'm really just looking at visual fidelity and to see how they will perform on this new GPU architecture. Will things be perfect? Will things be unplayable? I'm going to take a look at Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76. Alright, let's get to it. Let's start with Fallout 3. Well, it's been 16 years since Fallout 3 was released. I first played this game on, if I remember correctly, an NVIDIA GT520 that I got during a holiday sale on Newegg for maybe $30. The one thing I really dislike about this game is the introduction. You have to grow up, then you have to run around a maze at a low level with maybe a 10mm pistol. I really use a drink right now. I'm gonna skip all of that. Of course, before getting out of the vault, there was a massive slowdown in frames as the door opened. Coming out into the world for the first time, the frame rate is a bit unstable, but not so much that it's noticeable, at least by me. There's always goodies in this mailbox, even if the bombs dropped, uh, 200 years ago. More stuff to collect, even though raiders and scavers have had two centuries to loot these ruined houses. Asset poppin' is a fact of life in these games, even though today's computers are more than well equipped to just have everything loaded in. Walking into the, uh, gates of Megaton, I experienced some artifacting, but I don't really know why. The GPU is at 44% utilization, so it shouldn't be overheating, so hopefully it's a driver issue or something? Mora looks pretty good, Atlas would probably approve, and so does the inside of Crater Side Supply. Let's head over to Moriarty's solution. A cramped space with a number of NPCs to see how Ark handles it. The flashing lights seem to be working fine. Alright, time for the voyage to Arfu. On the way, there's a lot of level of detail changes streaming in. I would have loved to have looked at if this happened on Windows, but the game wouldn't start with my A770 installed. Really, I'm kinda surprised Bethesda hasn't released a patch. Oh yeah. Arfu is on an overpass on what's left of the Potomac. It's this overpass, right? There's an elevator somewhere, I think. I don't remember bloat flies being near Arfu. Yeah, this is the wrong portion of overpass. Oh, so there's a bit of water left after all, assuming that's the right portion of overpass this time. This environment gets the job done lighting and reflection wise. Oh, I remember the unalive Brahmin. This must be the place. Oh yeah, it is. Things look good. In Fallout 3, at least early game, let's take a look at New Vegas next. Now what the hell are you doing all the way out here? Ah, New Vegas. My favorite Bethesda Fallout game for now. Not just because it's so good story-wise, but because I still have the game saves from my last playthrough about three or four years ago. So I'll start off on the strip. Well, howdy, partner. Good to see you again. Boss is waiting for you upstairs, so get a move on. Alright. Let's take a look at Freeside, the post-apocalyptic favela outside of Rob House's Preserved in Time New Vegas. Let's head over to Novak. It should be daytime by the time we get there. Okay, let's check out the view from the T-Rex's mall. Oh, I forgot Boone would be up here. And the Mojave looks pretty good up here. Hmm. More of the just-in-time asset loading. It doesn't seem as bad as in 3, but it still happens. Alright, to finish up, let's quickly visit the boomers. Oh, and when I tried running New Vegas on Ark with Windows, bizarre stuff happened. For starters, the game would crash at around 2 minutes in over and over. And then there was the one time when everyone's skin turned to something like a photo negative color. OBS didn't pick that up either. So I don't know if something driver-wise broke or if it's just not working for me. Frame time is about the same as 3, but here at Nellis Air Force Base, things get really sorta nasty. I don't really know what it is that's causing this. Things look fine to me for the most part though. Let's move on to Fallout 4. So usually when I try and play these older games on my Arc A770, I try to play on maxed out settings because, well, the time when these games challenged legendary GPUs has long passed in a lot of cases. In the case of Fallout 4 vs. the A770 on Linux no less, it wasn't so much that Fallout 4 brought the A770 to its knees, it's that there was this. 
these shadowy circles. It's like the game was cursed with some sort of lighting smallpox. And it turns out the issue is ambient occlusion. You have to turn it off in the pregame launcher. It may have something to do with the rendering of what I came to call shabby shadows that seem to plague 4 and uh, 76. The big issues included assets loading in at higher details and assets popping in. Were games just this limited in 2015? Oh well, it's almost a decade later, isn't it? I had to start Fallout four from the beginning and well i ran to key landmarks severely under level i wanted to get to diamond city because it's one of the first places that could be taxing on a gpu of course when i got there it was covered in fog what is this silent hill before totally giving up on the corvega plant i tried leveling up by going out on the roof or whatever that location is called while there i encountered what i came to call graphical rusticles it's these sort of curtain looking assets all over the this area of the game. At first, I thought they were barriers and pretty much avoided them until I came across one covering a set of stairs I was walking down. I was able to get through it and I realized this was some sort of glitch. I was able to get Fallout 4 to run on Windows and the A770. Frame time seemed stable, but there were shabby shadows and lots of just-in-time asset pop-in on Windows as well. Oh, and the game crashed about eight minutes in. Now, on to Fallout 76. Well, I swore this game off ever since I saw the keynote introducing it. The stories that you create and tell yourself. By yeah, the weird, I mean, interesting characters and their predicaments are what makes Fallout, when it's at its best at least, the most fun. Yes, I know, they later added NPCs. I decided to give it a shot for $10 and uh, let's take a look. In the vault, ignoring the vivacious color scheme, which is out of character for vaults we've seen throughout the other games, things look good. I wonder if this is how the vaults are going to look in Fallout 5. Getting outside, I experienced a big drop in frames, so something's wrong on Linux. Oh, and the shabby shadows occur here too, if the frame drop outside isn't bad enough. On Windows, there were shadow issues there, though that seemed to be about it. I couldn't get MSI Afterburner to show its HUD, though things looked smooth. The water looked nice, though I didn't get a chance to jump in because the folksy campers turned out to be hostile. This about wraps up my playthrough of most of the Bethesda era Fallout games on Linux using Intel Arc, as well as some brief playing on Windows to see how things compare. I hope this helps if you're a Fallout fan who's curious about gaming on Linux and maybe interested in buying an Arc card. Hopefully things improve in the near future. That's about all. Thanks for watching and take care.